Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My mother-in-law tried to ruin my marriage. Now I'm cutting her out of our lives for good. He, my relationship with my mother-in-law has always been complicated. From the moment I met her, I knew that we were different in many ways. She was a traditionalist with a strong sense of family values and a belief in the importance of women's domestic roles. I, on the other hand, was more independent-minded with a career of my own and a sense of ambition that didn't fit into her idea of what a wife and mother should be. We shared a vision for our future together, one that included building a life that we both loved. As much as my husband and I loved each other, there was always a shadow cast over our relationship by my mother-in-law. Even before we got married, she made her disapproval of me clear. She criticized everything, from my job to my clothes, and always seemed to find fault with me. After we got married, things only got worse. My mother-in-law would drop by our house unannounced, expecting us to drop everything to entertain her. She would criticize the way I kept the house, the meals I cooked, and even the way I dressed. It was as if she wanted to undermine me at every turn to prove to her son that I was an inadequate partner for him. But my husband never wavered in his support of me. He always stood up for me and defended me even when it meant going against his mother. He saw how much her behavior hurt me and did everything in his power to shield me from her negativity. Despite this, my mother-in-law continued to cause drama. She would make snide comments about our relationship, casting doubt on our love and our future together. She even went so far as to suggest that my husband should leave me and find someone more suitable. It was exhausting and hurtful. It felt like no matter what I did, I would never be good enough for my mother-in-law. I began to dread her visits and to feel like I was walking on eggshells around her. As time went on, my mother-in-law's surprise visits became more frequent and more unbearable. I could feel myself becoming more and more anxious every time I heard her car pull into the driveway, knowing that I would be subjected to her criticism and negativity. Finally, I reached my breaking point. One day, after my mother-in-law had left our home, I sat my husband down and had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him. I told him how much his mother's behavior was affecting me how it was causing me to doubt myself and our relationship, and how I felt like I was walking on eggshells around her. To my relief, my husband listened attentively and didn't brush off my concerns. He acknowledged how difficult his mother could be and expressed his frustration with her behavior. We talked about how her surprise visits were disruptive to our lives and how they made me feel like I had no control over my own home. Together, we decided to have a conversation with my mother-in-law and set some clear boundaries. So we agreed that it was important for us to have some control over our own lives and our own home and that her surprise visits were no longer acceptable. So when we sat down to have the conversation with my mother-in-law, my heart was pounding with nerves and anxiety. I knew that she wouldn't take the news well, but I also knew that it was necessary for our well-being. My husband took the lead and started by expressing his love for his mother and his appreciation for everything she had done for him. He then gently brought up the topic of her surprise visits and how they were causing stress and tension in our household. At first, my mother-in-law was defensive and dismissive. She insisted that she had every right to visit her son whenever she wanted, and that we should be grateful for the time she spent with us. So, but my husband held his ground and calmly explained that while we appreciated her visits, we needed to have some control over our own lives and our own home. As the conversation continued, tensions rose and emotions ran high. My mother-in-law accused me of being controlling and manipulative, and she even went so far as to suggest that I was trying to drive a wedge between her and her son. But my husband didn't back down. He defended me in our decision to set boundaries, and he made it clear that our relationship was important to him, and he would do whatever it took to protect it. As the conversation came to a close, my mother-in-law was visibly upset and hurt. She accused us of not caring about her and of being ungrateful for everything she had done for us. But my husband calmly reassured her that we loved her and that we would always be there for her, even if we needed to set some boundaries to protect our well-being. Despite our conversation with my mother-in-law, things didn't always go smoothly. There were still times when she overstepped your boundaries or caused unnecessary drama. One such instance happened when my in-laws came over for dinner one night. My husband had cooked a delicious meal and we were all enjoying each other's company. But then, suddenly my mother-in-law started to act strange. At first, she complained of feeling dizzy and nauseous. We offered her water and tried to make her comfortable, but she kept getting worse. Soon, she was doubled over in pain and gasping for breath. In a panic, my father-in-law suggested that we take her to the hospital. We all rushed to the car and drove there as quickly as possible. My husband and I were terrified and confused, unsure of what was happening to his mother. When we arrived at the hospital, my mother-in-law was rushed into the emergency room. Doctors and nurses swarmed around her. We were all on edge, waiting for news on her condition. But then something strange happened. As we waited in the hospital room, my mother-in-law suddenly accused me of poisoning her food at dinner. She claimed that I had added some kind of toxic substance to the meal, and that it was the cause of her sudden illness. My husband and I were dumbfounded. We knew that it was impossible as he had cooked the meal himself and we had all eaten the same food. But my mother-in-law was insistent and she even went so far as to call the police to report me for poisoning her. It was a surreal and traumatic experience. My husband and I were in disbelief, trying to defend ourselves against these outrageous accusations. We were exhausted and emotionally drained from the whole ordeal. 
As the doctors began to examine my mother-in-law, they quickly realized that there was nothing wrong with her. They ran a series of tests, but everything came back normal. It was clear that she had fabricated her symptoms in an attempt to make us look bad and get her son to leave me. My mother-in-law's plan to get her son to leave me backfired badly. Instead of driving us apart, her accusations brought us closer together as a couple. My father-in-law was in disbelief. He couldn't believe that his wife would go to such lengths to cause drama and hurt our relationship. He apologized profusely and assured us that he had no idea that she was planning something like this. My husband and I were shocked and hurt. We couldn't understand why my mother-in-law would do something like this, especially after we had just had a conversation about setting boundaries. It felt like a betrayal and it was hard to come to terms with the fact that someone we loved and trusted could behave in such a manipulative and hurtful way. We were also relieved that the truth had come out, but the damage had already been done. Our relationship with my mother-in-law was irreparably damaged and it was clear that we needed to keep her away from us in the future. As we left the hospital that day, I couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness and disappointment. I had always hoped that my relationship with my mother-in-law would improve over time but it seemed like we were destined to be at odds with each other. When we reached home, a heavy silence hung between my husband and me. I could tell that he was feeling guilty and ashamed of his mother's behavior, and I didn't know what to say to make him feel better. Eventually, we arrived home and my husband sat me down on the couch. He looked at me with pained eyes and said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything that's happened. I'm sorry that my mother treated you so poorly, and I'm sorry that I didn't do more to stop it. I can feel tears stinging at the corners of my eyes, but I refused to let them fall. Instead, I simply nodded my head and told him that it wasn't his fault, that he can't control his mother's actions. My husband shook his head and said that he knows that, but he should have done more to protect me, that he should have put his foot down and set clear boundaries with her. He said that he should have been a better husband. I reached out and took his hand and told him that he is a great husband and that he has always been one. I told him that this wasn't his fault and he couldn't have known that she would do something like this. He looked at me with a mix of gratitude and sadness in his eyes. He said that he just felt like he had let me down. So he said that he wanted to give me the perfect life, but instead he brought me into this mess. I squeezed his hand reassuringly and told him that he didn't bring me into anything, that I chose to marry him because I love him and I know that we can get through this together. So we sat in silence for a few moments, just holding hands and trying to process everything that had happened. Finally, my husband spoke up again. He promised me that he would do better and that he will stand up for me and cut his mother off completely. I looked at him with a small smile on my face. I told him that I knew he would do it and that I would always be here to support him no matter what happens. The mother-in-law is emotionally abusive and manipulative. Crazy woman. Cut her off immediately. NTA. Mother-in-law has severe attachment issues. Bro, if not worse. Her son knows who he married. He didn't want a traditional wife. Clearly, look at his mother. The woman doesn't have a life, so she's trying to ruin her son's and OP's lives. Next story. I, female 29, babysat my nieces and nephew, male four, female six, and female seven, the day before Christmas Eve so that my brother and his wife could go to a nice dinner. They left around 6 p.m., so all I had to do was watch a movie with the kids and then put them to bed. I decided to watch Polar Express with them. All went well. And they were very excited about the movie. But I figured that was just kids being excited. Fast forward to Christmas. I got a frantic call from my brother yelling at me for showing the kids that movie. I didn't know this, but apparently there is a set of train tracks that run behind their house about 200 yards back. And on Christmas Eve, my nieces had snuck out of bed and walked out to wait for the Polar Express. My brother put them to bed around 10 and found them at 6 a.m. unwrapping presents under the tree. He realized they'd been outside because their coats, boots were strewn about the hallway, and their faces were pink from having been out in the cold. They didn't know how long the kids were out there. Doctor estimated about one and a half hours and took them to the ER because my younger niece's lips were blue and she was stumbling to where they found out that my younger niece had, thankfully, mild hypothermia. My brother is beyond angry at me. They recently moved to this house and I've never visited before Christmas Eve since I live in the city and they're about two hours away. So I've never seen the house in daylight and had no idea there were train tracks near it. It never occurred to me to say that the movie wasn't real. All the kids still believe in Santa, so I didn't think there was any harm in showing them a Christmas movie. I've gotten mixed reactions from people. My husband says it's not my fault and it's completely on them, as does my father and sister. But my brother and my mom think I'm the worst person in the world. I feel really awful and don't know what to do. Ita, read it. Da, your brother blames you because he doesn't want to accept that he's responsible. His kids snuck out of the house while he and his wife were responsible for them. That's on them. Parents are responsible for teaching their children about the dangers of leaving the house unsupervised and for train track safety. Parents are responsible for making sure their children know the difference between fact and fiction. Parents are responsible for communicating restrictions to babysitters. You played an age-appropriate Christmas movie. That's your only part in this. This is not your fault. Ta, they're the parents here and the kids snuck out on their watch. Your brother is desperately looking for anyone to blame but himself. 
It shouldn't have been on you to talk about movies not being real. It should have been on him to teach his children to never go outside. A. In the dark. B. Without an adult. C. Without parental permission. D. All of the above. Not to mention teaching them to go nowhere near train tracks for heaven's sake. I guess try to cut your brother some slack for the horrifying time they just had during the holidays, but he owes you a major apology as soon as he gets his head on straight. As does your mother. Next story. I, 27, female, have a friend called Beth. Beth has a boyfriend, Michael, and they've been together about nine months. I now live abroad, but I was spending December in my home city to see friends, family. Since Beth got together with Michael, Michael has become quite a good friend to me also. When I visited them at the beginning of December, Michael was talking about the company he'd recently joined and how it was kind of an old boys club type place. Family, money, nepotism, baby, work hard, play hard, city types. And he was having quite a hard time bonding with his team, especially his boss. He talked about the upcoming Christmas party and then said his team all night because they tended to tease him about him not understanding their conversations. He mentioned a popular holiday destination a lot of the team had been to over the summer where I have holiday before, and I was explaining some things he said had come up in the conversation. He suddenly suggested that I come to his Christmas party with him and help him bridge the gap with his colleagues. Beth immediately agreed. Here's the thing. I asked Beth four times during that dinner if she was okay with this, and she said yes. I asked her three times over the phone the day after when she was alone, and she said she was fine with it, and I was saving her from a stressful evening and doing something nice for Michael. I went to the party and actually it was a nice evening. Michael and I were not physical at all, obviously, but we are friends so it was fun to hang out and his team are exactly what you'd expect. A little out of touch and immature, but good fun for an evening. Michael thanked me profusely, even sent me flowers saying how much he appreciated it. I really thought I'd done a good thing. Ever since Beth has been ghosting me, I sent her several texts to meet up while I was in town and she ignored my calls and messages. I figured I'd speak to her about it in the new year, but yesterday when I sent her a Merry Christmas text, she replied with a wall of texts saying I had a nerve to try to be her friend after I completely destroyed her self-esteem and how she can't believe I actually went to the party. I pointed out that I asked her multiple times if it was okay and she said yes, but her point is I should have just said I should have should have known that it would make her feel bad that Michael wanted to use me to impress people. I'll admit I suspected it did make her feel bad, but when she was pushing me to do it anyway, I presumed she'd put her own feelings aside. My fiancé says that's not my fault and that Beth should have been honest instead of expecting me to read her mind. But a couple of my friends say I should probably have just said no in solidarity. A-I-T-A, N-T-A. Beth is a grown-ass woman, and if she had a problem with it, she should have used her words like an adult during one of the multiple times you asked if she was okay with it, saying she was fine with it, and then expecting you to read her mind is an a-hey move. She sounds very immature. You helped out a friend, that's it. If she has a problem with it, she should take it up with Michael. S. Chain. I was waiting for the part where Beth was not available to go, like out of town or something. Michael is in a hole for asking someone else to pose as his girlfriend because presumably you're more conventionally attractive than his real and completely available girlfriend. You for not realizing this was weird and rude to her. Her gentle one for not speaking up that she wasn't okay with it. So next story, my husband and I've been my, been married for nine years. In 2021, we found out my husband was being soiled sailed support. Turns out my husband had an affair shortly after we were married. It nearly ended our marriage, but we went to counseling together and I agreed to stay in the marriage with the following provisions. My husband was to get a second job so that his child support payments did not affect our household budget and that at no point in time would I ever consider having a relationship with this child. If he wanted to, fine, but I have absolutely zero interest in this kid. So my husband has been getting to know his kid over the past couple years and recently my husband came to me and informed me that there was some sort of baby mama drama. Apparently she has to self-surrender in May and is going to be incarcerated for eight months. My husband told me that he needed to take custody while his affair partner is locked up. Otherwise, the kid would have to go to their grandparents who basically live on the opposite coast from us. Their kid doesn't want to have to change schools or be so far away from their friends, dad, and mom. She will be doing her time fairly local to us. So after my husband told me that, I got up and left the house. I went to the grocery store on the corner and grabbed a copy of our area's apartment guide, went back home, and handed it to him. So he asked if I were serious. I told him I still felt the same way as I did three years ago. He said he didn't think that was fair considering the extenuating circumstances. I told him I don't care about the circumstances. His kid is not welcome in my home. If he wanted to take custody, I will grant him an amicable divorce, but I am not changing my mind. I am not taking care of some other chick's kid. Eat it for all the people concerned about what a whip cracker I am and work two jobs. He has never had a full-time job since we have been together. He works two part-time retail jobs now that add up to 40 to 50 hours a week. He currently only has supervised visitation with his kid. They see each other once or twice a month for a couple hours with a social worker present. And for those who seem to think that I need to be the one to file for divorce, no, I will not. I am not the one who created this situation. If my husband wants to pursue custody, I have told him I will not fight it. I will grant him an amicable divorce and let him be on his way. 
However, I am not going to waste my own time, energy, and money to do so. He is responsible for getting his own ducks in a row for the situation he created. That includes being the one to go through the headache of filing. Update. After posting, my husband and I continued to discuss the situation. I held firm and iterated again I will not live with a child, and if my husband wants to pursue this, he will have to find other housing. We discussed divorce. We discussed temporarily separating. We discussed a lot. We sat down and had a pretty big financial talk. He is not involved in our financial planning. I showed him the numbers he realistically had to work with. I told my husband the truth that while I love him, I won't lose sleep if we divorce. He has to do what's right for his own happiness and his kid. My husband had a bit of a breakdown over that. There was a lot of crying and him telling me that he loved me and didn't want to lose me. I broke down myself. We had a real good cry together. He asked if we could go back to our marriage counselor. So, I made an appointment. We went. We discussed the same things above, but with a counselor present. It basically boils down to my husband being very overwhelmed and conflicted about everything. He confessed he didn't really want to be an active parent but feels like he is supposed to. There's some deep stuff in there about his own family and race tied into that. So complicated emotions. He is terrified of losing me. He wants to prioritize our marriage. Hearing me say that I wouldn't lose sleep over divorcing left him shook. Our counselor strongly suggested that my husband get into individual therapy and gave some referrals. My husband has not pursued that. It did become pretty obvious to my husband that he was not in a place mentally or financially where he could take full custody, though. So, the kid is now in Virginia with maternal grandparents. My husband was actually going to go and visit the kid for their birthday this weekend. I gifted my husband some of my airline miles to buy his plane ticket. I did his laundry last night while he was at work so he'd have clean stuff to pack. However, my husband dropped the ball on his trip. I had a plans for this afternoon that I left early for, so I wasn't home when he was supposed to get up and leave. He stayed up late playing video games last night and overslept. Ended up missing his flight and couldn't afford last minute tickets on another. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.